And yeah, it's your turn. Okay, cool. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, yeah, thanks uh, for, for having me. Uh, my name is Jürgen. I work for a company called uh, Dynatrace. Um, so we are originating from the application performance monitoring. So actually, we really resonate uh, around those topics uh, that Joseph just mentioned. Um, is it the code? Is it the node? Like we are doing uh, originally really uh, all this um, monitoring of uh, infrastructure and applications and microservices. Uh, and now we also go into the direction of um, software intelligence. But today I won't talk a lot about Dynatrace. I will talk more about uh, Captain and uh, Prometheus, about the Prometheus ecosystem. There are a couple of building blocks that we see uh, when we were working with customers. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about this in the context of an open source project called Captain and how it was originally started by Dynatrace. Now it's, it's more organizations that are joining in and contributing to the project. Uh, and uh, I would say the first part is more generic and the second part of, the gen of, of this uh, presentation, I will talk a little bit about how we are trying to overcome those challenges that we see within, uh, within the, the project of Captain. Uh, I provided here some links. I can also provide uh, the slides at the end of my uh, presentation. I will put the, the link to the slides in the chat so you can also take a look at all these links. Uh, you can just click them so uh, no need to take notes. Actually, if you want, of course, you can do so. Um, well, let's get started. So what we saw is basically what, what you want in the end of your um, cloud native environment on your systems, you have all these microservices. What you really want for observability, you have uh, automated monitoring. So each time you onboard new applications to so your Kubernetes clusters, you onboard new workloads, you want to have them automatically monitored. You also want to have uh, alerts set up for critical applications in your production environments. And most often you also want to have some dashboards. So you not only rely on the alerts, so when something is alerting you, you get a notification. That's most often not enough, enough. So you also want to have some dashboards where you can take a look at and maybe already before it's alerting, you can see some of those things that are going out of uh, the original or out of the, the, the good boundaries and they are like misbehaving if you already can indicate these kind of things. But you don't want to spend a lot of time and wait, not wasting time, but spending a lot of time configuring all those. So you really want to have this all automated. So that's it's basically the goal where we want to go. Um, and we are trying to, to get there by uh, overcoming a couple of challenges. So we will start with what are my basic Kubernetes building blocks? What are the, 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 the central concepts, let's say, that I will be touching in this uh, presentation? I will highlight a couple of challenges that we saw uh, working with uh, customers and other organizations that are using Captain or contributing to Captain. And then I will um, for each of those challenges, I will uh, also sketch a solution and then I will basically talk a little bit about the open source project captain in the context of scaling uh, Prometheus, but also uh, about other things uh, it can do. Um, parts of it, especially the first part, uh, it's based on a blog I recently um, uh, wrote and uh, also the, the link is provided here if you want to take a look at it. So let's start at our basic building blocks. And I would assume most of you, if you've heard Prometheus or Kubernetes or Cloud Native before, I would assume most of you are uh, very much familiar because it's very simplified here. But anyway, you have your application cluster or actually clusters. So you might have more than one with all your applications on it. They expose their metrics on the endpoint. Prometheus is fetching all those metrics. Uh, and then you have your alert manager, you have your Profana all on top of your Prometheus cluster. And you also might have more than one Prometheus cluster to reach high availability. Uh, I won't touch this technical part of getting high availability of a Prometheus cluster. There are projects out there like Thanos, like uh, Victoria Metrics. So if you're really interested in having like a high availability setup of your Prometheus fleet, take a look at those projects. Uh, you will find great resources out there. What I will talk more about how you can deal with all of this configuration you have to do. Um, so this is more the, 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 the core of, of this presentation. 
Uh, and by the way, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to use uh, the, uh, the chat or the Q&A feature of, of Zoom uh, or just wait at the end and then just uh, throw the question in as you want. Um, so in the beginning, when we are starting with uh, Prometheus and with all the tools that kind of belong into this ecosystem, um, we start with writing YAML files, um, but not all the tools they accept YAML. So for Grafana, it's usually you write some JSON. Of course, you can uh, transform your JSON into YAML and vice versa. Um, but usually you start writing all those files and then you apply it to your, let's say, production environment or to your staging environment. And uh, we saw a couple of folks or organizations we're working with, they are re really fighting with keeping the, um, the configuration they kind of have in their IDE or whatever in their data store in sync with their um, production environment. So it's, it, it should be obvious, but it was not obvious to really have uh, to know which configuration is right now applied in my production environment. So one very promising approach, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a very good approach, is to use a GitOps approach, where you basically put all the, um, not only the code, but also all your configuration resources in a Git repository and have some kind of operator uh, synchronize the state of the Git repository with the state of your Kubernetes cluster. So it's basically checking if the configuration of your Git repository reflects the configuration of your um, Kubernetes cluster uh, or your Prometheus installation, your alert manager, your Grafana installation, and then it will um, apply the changes. So there is no need of a manual edit in your production system anymore. Everything will be version controlled in your Git repository. You can manage everything via um, pull requests. So you really have a central, let's say, control mechanism um, that you can apply. Um, and you can put all the configuration files in it. Uh, and it should kind of solve one of those problems. Anyway, you still have to write all the configuration files. And as I said, most of it is in YAML. A couple of it is, uh, might be JSON or any other language. Uh, and it's not only one file, it's actually a lot of files. Uh, so you will, you will come up with a lot of alerting rules, a lot of different scrape jobs, uh, dashboard configuration for all these different kinds of dashboards. You would not do, maybe you do some manual edits of a dashboard, but then to automate it, you will have some configuration files. Writing those takes a lot of time is also some, some quite error prone. So what you can come up with, and I think it's kind of a natural solution to use some kind of code generator. So basically you feed the code generator with the data, uh, with your, um, let's say, uh, with the, the important data points or the important aspects of what you want to achieve. And then you generate the configuration and you put this configuration then in the Git repository. So in this case, um, you can make use of, um, re it's basically a reuse mechanism. Uh, and uh, it will also um, help with reducing the errors of your configuration files. And there are a lot of potential code generators. I, um, I just know a bunch of them. So I put them in the reference section at the end of the, of, of the slide deck. And if you know some more code generators that you are using, uh, I would be happy if you leave a comment on the slide deck or a comment in the chat or somewhere um, and point out what you're using uh, because uh, I think everyone should like, maybe we can um, gain more insights from each other to, to really know what, what, what you're using. And there are a couple of um, generators out there, which is great. You can generate your configuration, but still, since those configurations are of different kind and you won't apply the same configuration to all of those tools, they might drift out of sync, let's say. So it might be that a recording rule or a straight job or a alerting rule might contain different information than the dashboarding configuration. So um, you might apply some, or you might feed the code trainer with different data than you will do with uh, between like a dashboard and the alerting. So you really have to take care that all of this is based on the same concepts. And this is where we think uh, basing these, um, these uh, let's say files and these very crucial parts of, um, of, of, of 
in the Prometheus ecosystem, based this on SRE concepts, site reliability engineering concepts. Um, there is a great book out there from, uh, from uh, I think from Google. Uh, they also publish it online for free, so you can take a look. And uh, they really base everything on service level indicators, service level objectives, service level agreements. They have error budgets, these kind of things. Um, where you really define what you want to achieve, what is like the, the important metrics, what are the important um, pillars of your, um, of when it comes to reliability of your system. And then you can feed this into the code generators. You can generate the configuration, you put it in the Git repository and you apply it to your, uh, to your actual um, tools. So it's really defining what you want instead of defining how it is done. So you don't have to learn all these different kinds of uh, languages or variants of languages, but you just define what you want to have. But of course, you might need some tooling that will translate this concept into an actual um, configuration that you can give to Prometheus or to Grafana. So with this, I want to introduce uh, this open source project uh, I've been working uh, with, uh, with, with a, a bigger team, of, uh, of course, um, and how we think you can automate the configuration of Prometheus, Grafana, but also other tools, how you can use this also for automating the quality gates for continuous delivery and also to automate parts of your operations. And uh, I didn't know the, about the slide that uh, Joseph was presenting in the, in the beginning, but uh, I think it really resonates uh, because uh, you really want to know, are you allowed to put something into production? Is it, is it, does it satisfy a given set of quality criteria? Uh, if not, um, you have to hold it back. So it should not reach production. This is what we define as a quality gate. And if something goes wrong in production, you want to automatically uh, react on this misbehaving uh, version of some microservice, for example. So it really, uh, I think it really um, fits, fits in this context. So let me quickly explain Captain in one sentence. I know it's a couple of buzzwords, let's say, uh, to be honest, um, but let me try to, to break it down into smaller pieces. So in one sentence, Captain is an event-based control plane for continuous delivery and automated, automated operations. Uh, I think uh, one of the most important parts here is event-based. So it's not an operator living in your Kubernetes cluster, but it's basically an event-based control plane. So it means Captain will receive events, will act upon those events, and will send out other events. And those events are cloud events. So that's also a CNCF project. I think cloud events are already incubating. Uh, I think so. Um, Captain, by the way, is a sandbox project, um, so it's, it's quite new, but already in the sandbox uh, stage. Um, and it, so it's event-based receiving events and sending out other events. This gives us one very important advantage. It's very easy to integrate with other tools because you just only have to send an event to Captain or you have to digest or just to consume an event from Captain. It's a control plane in the sense that Captain can really connect to other tools and kind of trigger other tools when it's the right time for them to execute. Like a testing service should be probably executed after you deploy the new version of a microservice, but before you are validating this new version of a microservice. So this kind of um, workflow is baked into Captain, and Captain then will reach out to the different tools. Um, in this sense, it's a control plane. For continuous delivery, because we can do continuous delivery, progressive delivery with Captain, uh, blue green deployments, for example, out of the box, that's possible with Captain, and automated operations in the sense that Captain can react on any alerts from the alert manager or problem tickets from Dynatrace or whatever tool you're integrating with Captain. And then Captain can trigger a remediation workflow, like executing a let's say a playbook in Ansible Tower or a workflow in ServiceNow or just some baked in remediation actions of Captain itself. Um, so in this sense, it can automate parts of your operations. So kind of a, let's say, um, compressed sentence, but it kind of has all the information in it. We need to define what Captain really is. Uh, we have a little bit more complicated picture here. I don't want to go into detail. I just want to show you a little bit about the conceptual architecture. What are the services? We call them services, 
but what are basically other tools that Captain usually integrates with. So we have our GitOps approach. Captain will store everything in its own Git repository, but we can also link it to GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, uh, whatever other Git-based repository. Uh, Captain will integrate with your container registry like Docker Hub. Captain can integrate with your continuous delivery if you don't want to use the continuous delivery functions of Captain itself, where we are applying Helm charts. You can also integrate with your Jenkins installation, your Excel release. Um, and you can integrate with a lot of other tools, but I think for today we are actually focusing on the last part here, where we're integrating with tools that are providing data for observability, like Prometheus or like Dynatrace, and tools that are, that are visualizing this data, like Grafana. So in this sense, Captain can control uh, the setup of Prometheus and Grafana in your installation. And Captain lives in your Kubernetes cluster, uh, in, in uh, we, we just sketched here that if you want to deploy something, it's basically one environment definition file that you will add to Captain and you will create a project in Captain with a shipyard file. Um, you might have already guessed that uh, Captain is basically the, um, the phonetic version of uh, the Captain of, of a ship. So the shipyard file really defines kind of the ship um, and you will define if you want the blue green deployment, if you want um, which test, if you want performance tests or functional tests, if you want automated remediation strategies, these kind of things you define in the shipyard file, but you won't define how it is done. You just define what you want to have. And Captain, for example, will set up all these different namespaces in the Kubernetes cluster and configure them um, for blue green deployments. Uh, here we're using uh, Istio behind the scenes. Uh, to distinguish between its versions and route the traffic in the, in the right direction. So this is what Captain can do in your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and as said, Captain is using those SRE concepts for configuring um, basically uh, the, this, this configuration files that then will be generated uh, by Captain and applied to the different tools. Um, first part is the service level indicators, or basically, I just want to explain the first two parts here. Um, the service level indicator is basically a metric. Let's, let's just say it's a metric that's uh, one easy description of it. And one example would be the error rate of login requests. And the objective upon those service level indicator would say this error rate has to be less than 2%. And usually we also define some uh, some time frame, so it's, it would be the login error rate should be less than or has to be less than 2% within the last 30 minutes or 50 days or just uh, within the last time frame of the test that we just applied. So this is how we are distinguishing the service level indicators and the objective. It's important to have this distinction because you can reuse very easily then reuse the service level indicators. And as an example, uh, I have one on the, on the next slide. Actually, what's also what I just want to mention here is um, red metrics. Uh, it's for, I think, uh, response time, error rate, and throughput. Uh, or actually, it's, uh, the rate is also already the throughput, error rate, and duration, which is basically comes to a response time. Um, these metrics, uh, they are automatically, uh, they're already included in Captain. So Captain will create these metrics for you for each microservice that you are managing with Captain. And this is one standard dashboard uh, we have seen that um, organizations are interested in because it gives like it's only three different metrics, but it gives a very good indication of the quality of a service that, uh, that's up and running in your environments. So as an example here, we would have the service level indicator file. On the left hand side, we have the name of the service level indicator. On the right hand side, we would have the, the prompt QL basically how to um, how to, to get this error rate. So you can just say it's a, it's a, a key value pair. And then in the service level objective file, you can reuse this. And the beauty here is that in the objective file, this is usually the file that defines a quality gate or a quality check, or you, you will use it in the quality check of, uh, of an application or a microservice. You don't have to know which monitoring tool you're using or which uh, data provider you're using. You can either uh, even, sorry, you can even exchange the monitoring tool under the hood and you don't have to exchange this quality definition files. So that's a uh, pretty, pretty sleek, I would say. 
Um, so in this case, we would define the error rate has to be smaller than one. So we only allow a maximum of 1% of error rate. Um, and we also count the number of database calls and it has to stay within the boundaries of 2% increase to the previous runs. So there is a little bit more uh, of meta information in the real objective, service level objective file, like the number of runs you want to compare it to and uh, the aggregation function. But it's, uh, the, the, the key points here are really to define criteria, a pass and a warning criteria. So if the pass criteria is not fulfilled, Captain will also check for the warning criteria. And then give you basically a total score. And you can also use this file for configuring Prometheus and Grafana in your monitoring tools or your data provider tools. So it's basically with the Captain CLI, you would, um, this is sending a cloud event to Captain. As I said, everything in Captain is an event. So also the CLI is just sending events to the Captain control plane. Um, like Captain configure monitoring Prometheus would send this cloud event. Captain will distribute it to Grafana and Prometheus or all those tools that are interested and actually subscribing to configuration events for a monitoring tool. Uh, these services, they will then execute the specific part. And for example, it will generate a Grafana dashboard and the alerts in uh, Prometheus Alert Manager. And with this concept, you can make sure that the Grafana dashboards, they are like in, in sync with the alerts or in sync with the recording rules or with the um, scrape jobs. So with this concept, because you're just, you're feeding the same information to the, to the generators or to the, to the um, captain services and they are then executing this. Sorry, so in this sense, uh, they, they cannot drift out of sync. You can only drift out of sync if you touch them manually and you, if you manually reconfigure them. Uh, but you can always do a captain configure monitoring again to, to, uh, to keep them in sync. So this is one part um, of how we can use these files, but there is a second part how we can reuse these files. And uh, this is where we call it the captain quality gate. So it's on the left hand side is basically exactly the same information. On the right hand side, we now use captain to evaluate the quality of our microservices. So for example, we start an evaluation for the last 30 minutes. So basically captain will fetch um, let's say quality data or the, or the metrics from Prometheus or NeoLoad or any other tool. Um, we'll fetch in the, for, we'll fetch a metric for less 30 minutes for a particular microservice with the information of this SLI file and the SLO file. Basically those two files, you don't, um, you, you, you don't uh, use them in the CLI command because they're already stored in the Git repository, but just to make, a, to make the point here, I added them uh, to this um, CLI command. But actually they are stored in the Git repository. And since we already know which service we want to test, Captain will find them, apply them, uh, in the sense that it will reach out to the SLI providers, so basically the data providers like Dynatrace, Prometheus, or whatever other tool you have connected to Captain, would we'll reach out to them, evaluate the data, like the error rate, evaluate it to the previous run, or in this case, it's not a percentage, but it's an it's, it's a, um, absolute threshold. So if compare it, if the error rate that it got from Prometheus, if it's smaller than 1%, score it, and then uh, apply a score between zero and one, and then come back with the total score. And depending on the total score that's defined in the objective file, will give you either a pass, like a thumbs up, or a thumbs down, uh, if the total score is satisfying uh, when it comes to your service level objective file. And basically you can do whatever you want with this. Uh, if you want to stop, promoting this artifact into the next stage, like production or uh, the pre-production phase, or if you just want to ignore the score. But actually we should not ignore when we have this possibility to, to do this quality evaluation really, really easy, just based on those files. And remember, you can reuse the indicators file and also for the response time, the error rate, and the, uh, the, um, the throughput, Captain is already providing those metrics out of uh, out of the box. You don't even have to, to write this file. But you can write your own 
indicators like the number of the database calls for a specific service because uh, that's very, very application specific. So in this sense, you can automate huge parts when it comes to onboarding new workloads to your uh, Kubernetes uh, environments. But also if you don't use Kubernetes, you can still make use of this concept of the Captain Quality Gate or you can configure other tools uh, that are living in your, in your ecosystem. Um, so I will go quickly through these slides how to actually use Captain. So when I was talking about Captain and the uh, workflow, uh, it's basically, we used to call it, a, let's say a delivery pipeline, but in Captain it's not a delivery pipeline with a lot of pipeline code, because you would only define what you want to have, like a stage. Uh, first stage is called stage, like staging, and prod is the second stage, and you would only define the deployment strategy and the testing strategy. And you don't have to find which tools you're using, that's defined in the captain's uniform. It's indicated here. So the uniform of the captain will basically show you uh, what do you want to use for your configuration store. It's GitHub. How, what do you want to use for the deployment? It's Helm. Uh, you want to connect it to your chat ops tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams. In this case, it's Slack. Uh, you want to connect to your testing tool. That's Jmeter. You want to connect it to your automation tools like uh, captain or ServiceNow. And you also want to connect it to an observability provider. And in this case, it's Prometheus. So that's what you define in a file called the captain's uniform. In the shipyard, you just define what is the environment captain should work upon. So captain will set up the Git repository, will set up the environments and set up the namespaces in the Kubernetes cluster. Next thing is to you onboard services to captain. You apply some help charts to captain. Uh, or not, you're, sorry, you're not applying the helm charts to captain, but basically you are providing the helm charts to captain so captain can uh, use them in its internal Git repository to, to version control them and to make sure uh, they always, um, like it's the version that is stored in captain is also the version that is applied in your Kubernetes cluster. Captain can then configure the monitoring provider based on SLI and SLO files. So you will also add SLI and SLO files that I've shown you before to the Git repository. And with this, Captain will then create and generate um, the scrape jobs, all this configuration, uh, also for Grafana. And finally, you will deploy an artifact or you can deploy an artifact. Uh, and with artifact, I basically mean a new microservice, a new version of a microservice um, by just referring to the new image that you want to deploy and Captain will start its internal workflow, will update the Git repository, will update the, oh, here we go, uh, will update uh, the stage and will update the, the, um, your Kubernetes cluster by deploying this, the blue or the green version of the microservice, will trigger the tests by triggering uh, the JMeter tests will score the tests. Uh, so again, once the JMeter tests are finished, the JMeter integration of Captain then will send out the event to Captain. The JMeter tests have just finished. Captain also knows when they were started, so Captain can uh, reach out to the data provider and will find the data for exactly this, this time frame. Will score it and then can decide if it's promoted or not. Uh, in this case, if we want to promote it we can go on with the very same workflow in the next stage, which is production in this case. Uh, we can also skip some parts of the workflow. So if we don't have any tests, let's say for production, we won't do a, a load test anymore because we usually have our end users hitting our environments with some load. So we don't need to execute a, an additional load test, but still we want to score it after a couple of minutes uh, if the actual new version that we deployed if it satisfies the criteria. And then we can again decide uh, or captain will give us a score and we can decide if we want to keep it or want to roll it back. Uh, this, this can be also done automatically by captain. So in this case, you can do a lot of automation, not only for automating uh, your, um, for automating the onboarding of new workloads to Prometheus, but also automating when it comes to rolling out new versions of your application, when it comes to integrating more tools, when it comes to um, um, automating operational aspects. Uh, because as said, if there is a problem event coming in, Captain can basically execute the same workflow, but it's first doing a rollback, then checking if the rollback was actually 
uh, satisfying. So if there was an, an increase of an error rate, we, we roll it back. Captain will check is the increase of the error rate now decreasing, and if it's is it now uh, passing again this quality gate, and then we'll keep this version. Otherwise, it will escalate. For example. So in this sense, um, we can uh, we can integrate Captain with a lot of different tools with this. Um, with the concept of cloud events. I just provided here a couple of tools that are, um, that are living in the Captain ecosystem, I would say. So we have our GitHub repository, uh, our usual repository is github.com slash Captain, but other services, they live either in Captain Contrib, which is for Captain contribution, or in Captain Sandbox. So first we start with Sandbox projects. Uh, once we see more adoption of the Captain community, and uh, we see high quality of the service, uh, they are promoted to the Captain Contrib um, uh, organization, let's say. And in this case, we have, for Prometheus, we have two services. One service is responsible for configuring uh, Prometheus and receiving alerts from Prometheus and translating these alerts from Prometheus into a payload that also Captain can understand. So it will make sure that all the events that are floating inside the different microservices of Captain or inside the Captain installation, they are all having the same format, all this is the same cloud format. So this is done by the Prometheus service. And then we have the Prometheus SLI service, which is basically retrieving uh, or used to, um, to, to fetch the service level indicators uh, from a Prometheus endpoint. Uh, and we already, as I said, we already put in some metrics here. Um, the response time, the error rate, the throughput that's already baked in. And uh, once Captain knows what's the name of your service and where does it live, it can automatically uh, create this for you. And based on this, we also now have a Captain uh, Grafana service that it's not yet in our Captain Country repository, but it's in our Sandbox repository. And it's listening basically to the same events and setting up a dashboard for you in Grafana based on those three metrics. Uh, and if you want to see more, uh, or different kinds of dashboards set up. Um, just remember, it's an open source project. So if you're interested in it, uh, please go ahead and check it out. You can also open up some issues or even better if, you, uh, if you're contributing with the pull request, uh, if you uh, want to make this project uh, like bigger, uh, want to, to be part of the Captain community. Um, yeah, I'm almost at the end of my talk, I just want to um, to point out, to highlight some of the resources that I found during my research and uh, also found uh, when working with customers. So here are a couple of those tools that are used to generate Prometheus configurations or Git, uh, not Git, uh, GitHub, but uh, Grafana configurations. So you will find a couple of them. If, again, if you have more, uh, let us know. Um, I will share the, the link to the slide deck just in a minute. So you can also comment on it. Uh, I have linked also a presentation here on the red method. Uh, in the slides is also a link to the presentation of uh, um, SLIs, SLOs, and uh, SLAs uh, from Google. Uh, it's very, very nice. And yeah, if you think Captain is something, uh, some tool that might be interesting for you, um, check it out. It's captain.sh, that's our website. Uh, I said all the source code lives on GitHub, so you can also go there. Uh, download it. It's basically one CLI that you download and from the CLI uh, that's connecting them to a Kubernetes cluster and you can install it in, on the Kubernetes cluster. If you don't want to use it on the Kubernetes cluster, we also provide a new installation option where you're using Captain on a small Linux box uh, and Captain will come with its own, let's say, runtime and the runtime is Keys. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but Keys is basically K3S. So it's a single binary Kubernetes cluster where you can run the Captain Control Plane and you can still connect all the other tools to the Captain Control Plane, but you don't have to install it in your running Kubernetes cluster. Um, yeah, so I just provided a couple of links here and I think that's it. So um, thanks a lot. Uh, if you have any questions, I think we've got some time right now. Otherwise, we will do the break, uh, but uh, I think uh, Joseph will decide what what we are doing next. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your talk. And um, yeah, guys, any, any questions? Um, chat shows no questions. So just 
including the slides if someone is interested. Uh, that should work, I think. 